Good evening, good evening, Heart Ministry Network TV. This is Pastor Vanders Arthur L. Weathersby. And I'm Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. And we're just, just the truth anyhow with the Weathersby's of Sound the Alarm Ministries brought to you by Heart Ministry Network TV. We're back at you for another week. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for what, he's, what is yet transpiring and what he's yet saying in his word. Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come once more and again, thanking you and praising you, God, and worshiping you, God. Hallelujah from our heart. Oh, God, because you're just that good, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, God, for your goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, because your goodness brings us into repentance, Father. And we thank you for forgiving us and loving us. And, oh, God, granting us grace, oh, God, to be able to repent before you, oh, God, as you work in our hearts. Godless sorrowness, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you right now, God, for your refreshing, your power, your renewal, your quickening power, your elimination. God, thank you for your word. Hallelujah, glory to God, that's coming forth, oh God. Hallelujah, in this great ministry, oh God, a heart ministry, oh God, dot net TV, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we just want to bless you, oh God, for the CEOs once more and again, Pastors Ken and Brenda Divers, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you for the supporters, oh God, hallelujah. Thank you, God, for giving us all the ear to hear your word, oh God, to receive it, to be a doer of it, oh God, to illuminate our minds, eyes, oh God, in Jesus' name, because truly your word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. It come to save, set free, heal, and deliver, oh God. Father God, we thank you right now, God. Now let the words of our mouth, meditation in our heart, be acceptable in our sight, oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, and our souls say amen. amen. We're coming out of the entire chapter of Romans, the sixth chapter. Amen. Good to sit down and listen to the word. Amen. And hear what the God is saying through his word. Amen. So it's Romans six chapter, first through the 23rd verses in our hearing. Praise the Lord. What are we going to do verse, starting at verse eight? Yes, we're going to start at verse eight to the 23rd verse. Amen. Praise God. In our hearing, listen to what thus saith the Lord. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has power over him for by the death he died. He died to sin, ending his relationship to it once for all. And the life that he lives, he is living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. <clears throat> Even so. Consider yourselves also dead to sin and your relation to it broken, but alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with him, <coughs> excuse me, in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore rule as king in your mortal short-lived perishable bodies to make you yield to his cravings and be subject to his lust and evil passions. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments, tools of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to God as though you had been raised from the dead to perpetual life and your bodily members and faculties to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under law as slaves, but under grace as subjects of God's favor and mercy. What then are we to conclude? Shall we sin because we live not under law, but under God's favor and mercy? Certainly not. Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourselves to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him whom you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death or to obedience, which leads to righteousness, right doing and right standing with God. But thank God, though you were once slaves of sin, you have become obedient with all your heart to the standard of teaching in which you were instructed and to what you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you have become the servants of 
righteousness of conformity to the divine will and thought, purpose, and action. I am speaking with, I'm speaking in familiar human terms because of your natural limitations. For as you yielded your bodily members and faculties as service to impurity and ever increasing lawlessness, so now yield your bodily members and faculties once for all as service to righteousness, right being and doing, which leads to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But then what benefit return did you get? from the things of which you are now ashamed. None for the end of those things is death. But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become the slaves of God, you have your present reward in holiness and its end is eternal life. 23rd verse in conclusion, for as the wages which sin pays is death, but the bountiful free gift of God is eternal life through in union with Jesus Christ, our Lord. I have read, praise God, Romans, the sixth chapter, starting at the eighth verse to the 23rd verses. And we thank God for his already blessed anointed and appointed word. Amen. Amen. We're always conscious of the fact that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And the subject that we're dealing with in this month is God's grace is not a license to sin. God's grace is not a license to sin. Now, my wife happily stated that we are in Romans, the sixth chapter uh, for this series. But we you have to go back to last week. Amen. Pick up the first seven verses that we did. Amen. Amen. I think it was six or seven verse, seven mm -hmm. verses that we did. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to read them all again for Amen. you. Amen. You just got to go back and check out the uh, on demand. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyhow, on Heart Ministry Network TV. Amen. <laughs> yeah, God's grace is not a license to sin. Amen. So we were talking about how the grace of God was so important because God's grace allowed mankind, even though God had declared in Genesis 2, 17, when he spoke to the man and, and he actually spoke to both of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I know I got somebody saying, but he only said spoke to the man. OK, Genesis 2, 16, 2, 17 is where we were, mm -hmm. where I'm going to take you, I should say. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says in the Amplified Study Bible, Zondervan edition. Mm -hmm. And it reads, Arthur, what does it read? How does it read? It reads this way once I get there. I thought I was there. <laughs> I was in the first chapter. <laughs> Genesis 2.16 says, mm -hmm. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely, unconditionally eat the fruit from every tree of the God, but only from the tree of the knowledge, recognition of good and evil, you shall not eat. Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall surely, most certainly die because of your disobedience. Now, I said that he spoke to both of them, and some people said, But wait a minute. He go to verse 19 and says, not good for a man to be alone. Mm -hmm. So God going to make, you need to make him a help me. Yeah, let's go to verse 23, mm -hmm. Genesis 2, 23. Mm -hmm. Then Adam said, this is after God had formed the woman. Then because he, you know, took bones. No, I got to go to verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made fashion, formed into a woman, and he brought her and presented her to the man. That's very important because mm -hmm. now I'm going to have to go to Genesis 2, 7. Lord God Almighty. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lord God, to just, then the Lord God formed, that is, created the body of man from the dust of the ground, breathing his, into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, note what it said in, in verse 22 for the woman, and the, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made fashion into a woman, and he brought her and presented her to the man. Then Adam said, this is not bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. He shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Note, there's a distinction here. God breathed life into man for him to become alive. He breathed nothing into the woman that he made. Mm -hmm. She was already alive in the man. Praise God. That's why Adam said she was bone of my bones and flesh yes. of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. That's what I'm saying. She understood and she heard what the man heard. Amen. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So, so we're in Genesis 3. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And I want to take you to that place where God had to uh, show forth his grace on mankind. I think it was at verse 20, uh, verse 22, I think it was a 22 or 21. Might have been 21. 321, the Lord God made tunics of animal skins for Adam and his wife and clothed them. We were there last week uh, when we were talking about this. This was an example of God's grace being manifested for man in the very beginning. Why? Because if you recall in going back to Genesis, the early part of the third chapter, when the man and the woman realized they had sinned, the yes. Bible, oh, excuse me, the Bible says that they fashioned together fig leaves. They both fashioned together fig leaves to cover themselves. It was insufficient. Yes. It was insufficient. Mm -hmm. Just like today for you and I, there's nothing that can cover your sins that you and I can manufacture that's going to please God. That's right. The only thing that covers us from our sin is the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that oh, God really. is willing to accept. And that's the only thing that he's going to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. That's why he gave us his grace. Mm -hmm. The Bible further it goes on to say that uh, uh, the God, uh, we, are, we are saved by, uh, we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace. Yes. Not, the, not, not that works that men might that's boast. It's right. a free gift of God. That's right. He Amen. gave up his only free begotten gift. son freely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Free gift. You didn't pay for it. You didn't even ask for it. Mm -hmm. God just did that for you. Mm -hmm. Why? He loved us that much. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. And because he loved us that much, he also wants us to be clear about the fact that my grace is not a license to sin. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, mm -hmm. and the Lord God said in verse 22, and the Lord God said, Behold, a man has become like one of us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, knowing how to distinguish between good and evil. Now he might stretch out his hand and take from the tree of life as well, eat his fruit and live in this fallen sinful condition forever. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is a, uh, 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 this particular verse right here mm -hmm. is a strong supporting verse for what the subject is. Mm -hmm. um, God did not save you and I for us to continue living the That's life right. that we have been living. That's Second right. Cor Corinthians 5, 17 declared that. Yes. Some other scriptures that yes. we read last week into your hearing and declared that may come out again, yes. but it is very clear by the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important for you and I when we're looking at the word of God or we're trying to understand the principles of God's word, mm -hmm. it's in his word. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's where you need to go. Don't go nowhere else. Because mm -hmm. if you lean to your own understanding, you're going to come out wrong. How do mm -hmm. I know that to be so? Proverbs 14, 12, 16, 25 says there's a way, there's a way. that seems right to a man. Right. The end thereof is death. death and Amen. And on that note right there, guess what? <laughs> We're going to take a short pause for the call. We're going to come back. We're going to take a, a time out for some advertisement. We'll be right back. Hey there, praise the Lord. I am Pastor Sherry Weathersby. Praise God, along with my husband, Pastor Arthur Lee Weathersby. Praise God, and we are Sound the Alarm Ministry. Amen, praise God. Praise God, and we have a, a ministry on at, on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's just the truth anyhow. You all ought to join us, praise God. God is speaking. He's speaking. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're back, like we said, and we were back here. We're talking about how God's grace and significance of it is and that the, uh, the misunderstanding that's operating in the body of Christ over the use of God's grace. We're clearly defining, according to the word of God, even going back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. What God's intent was concerning his grace. Mm -hmm. He said in Genesis 3.22, and behold, a man has become like one of us. This is after he bit into the fruit mm -hmm. of the knowledge of good and evil, knowing how to distinguish between good and evil. And now he might stretch out his hand and take mm -hmm. from the tree of life as well and eat his fruit and live in this fallen sinful condition forever. That's why sin is not a license to sin. I mean, sin is grace. not a license to mm -hmm. sin. Sin, God's grace is That's not right. a license to sin. That's because right. if you operate and continue to operate in sin, you're in a fallen state. Mm -hmm. And there's no way that God's going to allow you to continue to be that way and eventually end up in heaven with him. That's not going to happen. That's How right. do I know that to be so? Well, the, the Bible says this in, in verse 23. Therefore, the Lord God sent Adam away from the garden. Mm of Eden to till and cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So God drove out the man, drove the man out at the east of the garden of Eden. He permanently stationed the cherubim in the sword with the flashing blade, which turned round and round in every direction to protect and guard the way entrance access to the tree of life. Why? Because God says this very plain and clearly. There's only one way to get into heaven. 
Jesus Christ said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through by me. So in other words, we cannot use God's grace, That's continue right. operating in sin, yes. and think we're going to get to the Father. That's right. You can't do that. That's right. Because the Bible says, only the righteous shall see God. Romans the sixth chapter. Amen. Amen. Sixth chapter. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that, that seventh, the eighth verse says, now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live together with him. Yes, we do. We know we shall live together with him. Why do I know that to be so, Arthur? Because my Bible and my closing benediction, I like to use that a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Jude 24, 25 says this, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you fathers before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power forever. That's right. God is looking for uh, 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 one day Jesus Christ is going to bring us unto himself. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. And, 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 and the only way we're going to get there is if we live a life that is pleasing unto him. Because, again, none but the righteous shall, shall see, see God. God. And you shall not have eternal life with him if you're living an unholy, unrighteous life, if you're living in sin. That's why it's important for you and I to understand God's grace is not a license to sin. Amen. It's power. God's grace is empowerment for us. Once again, as we said earlier, praise God, it's just not a feeling or something we put on and take off. Praise God. It's the grace of God. It's, it's the mercy of God and the grace of God. Praise God. It's empowerment. It's a kingdom principle that we're to live by. Mm -hmm. And even as he was reading about how, you know, God said, lest they would put forth their hand, my God, to the tree of life and live forever. Now that we are in the grace of God and been saved and, and, and we pray more, we're coming to Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then they backslide out there. Come on back home. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Grace made a way for Hallelujah. you to get back. Hallelujah. You can get back and you can know you're back. The Holy Ghost will help you in that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Now that we're on this side, there are things that God's saying, put forth not your hand to. That's right. Don't touch it. Hallelujah. Don't touch it. Praise God. And as, as, as it said, as we were saying earlier about the grace of God and the mercy of God, praise God, we can't live our lives like we want to live it now. Mm -hmm. Praise God. God's saying, don't touch it. So therefore, there, we have to remember, though we are saved, sanctified, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. We got the presence of God inside of us, Amen. but we still have to remember that sin principles are still in the flesh. Yes. And, 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 and yes, we get weak along the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you can get stronger and stronger because see, you got to make the declaration with us. Sin don't live here anymore. Amen. It just don't live here anymore. You got to decree that thing and know this thing is real. Just like it was real when we was outside of the ark of safety. This is real. God is real. Oh, it's more than singing a song. Mm -hmm. Yes, God is real. Yes, he is. He's real in my soul. Yes, he is. But he wants us to know, praise God, that I'm in you to help you to live the life I'm calling for you to live. By my grace and by my mercy. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. things are happening. Yes, things are hurting, painful. Yes, things are disappointing. Not only with our own life, but the life sometimes we live with one another or others. Situations on the job. Whatever the case may be, man is born of a woman is what? Few yeah. days. Few days. And how much trouble? Much trouble. Much trouble. Much trouble. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We be in some trouble, <laughs> y'all. Oh, yeah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the praises. All those things that we have now. But we still got to be aware. He told us, didn't he? he did. In First Peter 5 and 8, to be sober, vigilant. Praise God. Because the devil, that our adversary, the devil, he's a Roman. Mm -hmm. Roman 2 and 4, seeking who he can devour. Praise God. That's why we got to get the word of God in our heart that we don't sin against him. Yes, we can live a sinless. Yes, we can. Yes, he we said can. through him only can we do all things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Grace is not a license to sin. Amen. Amen. That's so important to understand because, again, the purpose of God's grace is to keep us from sin. To get us into that place, well, to not only uh, keep us from sinning, but to get us to that place where we don't sin. Yes. That's what I want to say, where we don't sin. Because as long as we're in this sinful body, we're going to have access to sin. Oh, yes. We will have access to sin. Why? Because there's no good thing dwelling in the flesh of man. 
The nature of man is sin. That's right. Because any time that you realize that as a man and a woman are representing mankind, that your, your preeminent thought is all about you. And I, and I want to make that real plain and clear. Your preeminent thought outside of a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is selfish. Mm -hmm. Straight up, no doubt about it, selfish. The relationship that we have through Jesus Christ brings us to a place of selfless. Selfless. To be selfish and to be selfless. Yeah. That's a process that we have to go through. God gives us his grace so that we can come through this process. Because why? We have to fight and combat the, uh, 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 the sin. The Bible says that we, we war not against flesh and blood. Yes. It's yes. a spiritual warfare. Yes. It's not carnal. So therefore, it's the, and it's mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And you know what we have to do so yes. that we don't allow ourselves to uh, get to that place where we start to manipulate God's word and live our life any old kind of way? I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you what we got to do. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. We did Romans 12. We did Romans 12, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Did we do that? We, we spoke on it, but we didn't read it. We didn't read it? Okay, we're going to read it. We're going to read Romans Amen. 12, 1 and 2, then we're going to go somewhere else after Amen. that. You got it? Amen. Mm -hmm. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in the view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship to Second verse, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Amen. Because, see, we tied Romans 12.1 um, back to uh, uh, Romans, I mean, Romans 12, 1. Yeah, we did. Romans 12, 1 back to Romans 6, 1, mm -hmm. when it asked the question about what should we do about sin. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Bible wants us to understand that we have to submit ourselves over to God. So what, Arthur? So we can be transformed, that second verse, um, by the renewing of our mind, the entire renewing entire. of our mind. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if, any of you, if you leave any parts of your mind stuck, in the old, guess what's the subject to happen? You're going to fall back into the old. Why do we do that? Because it's familiar. It's comfortable. And we know how to, we don't even have to think consciously about it just to fall into it. Many of us have had this happen on us on, on occasion where uh, something was going on or some event or activity was going on. And we actually said or did something. And then we'll say something like this. I can't believe I said or did that. No, I don't know why not. That's your nature. Amen. You did what you did what you knew. So therefore, God says you need to learn something new and you have to have your mind transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. Oh, oh, yeah. So that you can prove for yourself was a good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Now, I'm going to take you to uh, Hebrews again. Let, uh, before you go to Hebrews, yeah. let's go to that third verse. Okay. Also in Romans 12, uh, as, as, it, as we had read about the perfect will of God and being something on his sight for by the grace, unmerited favor of God. Given to me, Paul was saying, I warn you. He's warning us. He warned them back then. God is warning us through his scriptures today. Not to um, estimate and think of myself, of himself more highly than he ought. Not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith, a, a proportion by God to him. God has given to every man a measure of faith. faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's by the grace. It's by the unmerited favor of God that we are saved and we're not our own. That's right. Amen. That, that's something that you, you and I have to lock into our minds. Because mm -hmm. when you realize that, then you won't try to manipulate God's grace to, to, uh, to coincide with the way that you want to live your life. You remember, your life is not your own. It's in him that we live, move, and have our very being. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, uh, is another uh, yes. a, a scripture that helps us to get to that place where we don't, where we uh, avoid sinning, where we, where we do all that we can to not sin. Mm -hmm. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin, which so easily and cleverly entangles us, mm 
-hmm. Let us run with endurance and act the persistence of the race that is set before us. Here mm -hmm. lies another reason why we ought not try to manipulate God's grace mm -hmm. to continue for sin because it is not a license to sin. Thank why you. would God allow you to have a license to sin when he says that sin is something that causes you not to be able to run your race? And your race is, and, and the race is the pathway, the journey he has set before you. And where is that race going to? Where is the finish line? Mm -hmm. Heaven. Mm -hmm. Heaven. Yes. Yeah. Heaven is our home. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, if you don't, if you had not been with us before, we talked about this once before about uh, this life that we live on this earth and everybody wants to live the good life. Yeah. You want to live the American dream since we are in America. Amen. Back in the day, these American dream used to be all about owning a home. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something here. The home that I'm owning ain't got nothing to do. It will not be found in, let's say I'm in Delaware, women's in Delaware, Newcastle County. No, it will not. My home is on high. And how do I know that to be so? Jesus Christ said in John, the 14th chapter, uh, 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 if you believe in me, if you believe in God, also mm -hmm. believe in me. Because in my father's house, mm -hmm. there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you for where I, so that when I go, I will come back for yes. you. And, and where I'm going, you know where I'm going. Yes. The apostle Thomas said, Lord, we don't yeah, know where you're where, where you going, so how can we know the way? John 14, 6. I am the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through by me. Mm -hmm. The home that God has for me that I'm, that I'm looking to occupy is in heaven. And I cannot get there if I have sin holding me back. Oh, my God, yeah. Mm-hmm. Verse 2 says, uh, Hebrews 12, 2, looking away from all that will distract us uh -huh, and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the perfecter of, our, of faith, the first incentive of our belief in the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal yes. set before him, endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the uh -huh. throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and completion of his word. That's why we cannot allow ourselves to succumb to sin. We cannot allow ourselves to come up with a, re a, a justification for yeah, our sin. That's right. And that's what many are trying that's to do right. in the body of Christ with this here false doctrinal teaching mm -hmm. that grace is all right. I mean, no, that, that, that grace will cover you no matter what you do. Yeah, we know that Jesus Christ bore all our sins in his body. He forgave us of, for sins past, present, and future. But hear me and hear me well. God does not expect you and I to continue operating in sin. Amen. That's just the truth anyhow. Praise oh, God. my God. Praise God. Romans chapter, um, praise God, chapter 5 in Romans, as, as the man of God was ministering, praise God, took me here. Praise God, first verse, therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, isn't that powerful? Declared righteous and given a right standing with God through faith. Mm -hmm. For the just shall live by faith, right, and not by sight. Amen? Let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and, and to enjoy. God wants us to grasp the fact of what he is saying to our, to our hearts and our minds through the word of God. Peace through God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, through him also. Everything is through Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have our access. We got access, y'all. Access has been granted unto us. Entrance, praise God. Mm -hmm. Introduction by faith into this grace. What grace? The grace that God gave us. Mm -hmm. State of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand. We stand now, not in our own self. Amen. We stand now by the grace of God. You might be by yourself. You might be lonely sometimes. You may not understand sometimes. Sick in body. Not only things about ourselves, but maybe we endure with someone else. Praise God, but it's by grace. Hallelujah. The strength, the empowerment of God, mm -hmm. the favor of God that you and I stand. You can stand through anything. Praise God. Keep on the whole arm of God. Amen. And it says, and let us rejoice. And it, there's got to be some rejoicing in this thing. Hallelujah. And everything we got to give God praise and thanks for this is the will of God concerning us. That's what the scripture said. But that, is that what we doing? Amen. Praise God. We can read scripture all day long, but he said be a doer of it. And the more we practice the word of God, the more we do the word of God. Amen. The more it becomes us. Hallelujah. And enjoy the glory of God. Amen. Because that, that's the purpose of grace. Again, grace. The Bible said we stand firmly on that. 
Yes. Stand firmly on that. I shall not be moved. Yes. As a matter of fact, we're supposed to be unshakable and unmovable in the faith. Yes. Amen. But you cannot be that way if you try to manipulate the grace of God yes, for, and, 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 and allow you to go out there and continue doing what you have been doing before you receive salvation. God will not. That's just not going to happen. Be ye not deceived. God is not mocked. You yes. shall reap what you have sown. Amen. Okay, we're going to go Romans back to 6th chapter, mm -hmm. six chapter of Romans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ninth verse is because yeah. we know the self-evident truth that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. De death no longer has power over him. So listen to what the word of God is trying to get you to understand. Jesus Christ already died for our sins. He did it one time, one time only. He ain't doing it again. So what am I saying? If you try to continue to manipulate God's grace and continue to live a sinful life, you're making God's word of no effect. But I'm here to tell you that the word of God shall not change. Matter of fact, Jesus Christ says this about himself. Right. I'm the same yesterday, today, forevermore. I change is not. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Never die. Death no longer has power over him. So mm -hmm. in other words, he ain't coming back down here to save nobody. Mm -hmm. He ain't coming back here to go through what he did when he was on the earth for 33 and a half years. Mm -hmm. That ain't, that's already been done. Mm -hmm. so, so for those of you who think that you can continue to operate in, 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 in this life and use God's grace to manipulate or to justify your actions, you are grossly mistaken. For the death that he died, he died to sin. Yes. Ending his power and paying the sinner's debt. Yes. Once and for all. That's what we're saying. Yeah. The life that he lives, he lives to glorify God in unbroken fellowship with him. Yes, so you and I have to yes. understand, we had a broken fellowship with God. Yes. That was identified back yes, in Genesis. Yes. When God kicked. Well, I, I, I don't want to say that. I'm going to say this. God, God terminated the lease in the Garden of Eden to, the, to Adam and Eve. Terminated it. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and it caused that, that separation because beforehand, man, man, mankind was able to commune with God in fellowship. Yeah, commune with God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that no man has ever seen God. That's absolutely true. God's word is true. Remember, Numbers 23 and 19 supports that. Yeah, no man has ever seen God. That's right. But they didn't commune in the flesh. Because there's no way that God and man can commune in the flesh. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, no, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, and start around that 10th verse, you'll find out that the, the carnal mind can't understand the things of God. That's right. It, it, it's enmity to him. That's Don't make right. no sense. Hostile. It's folly. Hostile. Hostile. Yes. Yeah. Hostile. And, and mm -hmm. it's folly. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the carnal only speaks of carnal, only mm -hmm. knows of carnal. Mm -hmm. The spiritual speaks of spiritual, knows of spiritual. And, and the spiritual is spiritually discerned. That's with relationship. We have no spiritual discernment outside of the Holy Ghost. And if you, you have no if you have no spiritual relationship outside of the Holy Ghost, that means you ain't saved. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you're not born again and you receive the gift of God uh, by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, then you can't be saved. Mm -hmm. You can't be. That's just the truth anyhow. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Even so, consider yourself to be dead to sin, your relationship to it broken, but alive to God. Mm -hmm. In, in unbroken fellowship with him in Christ Jesus. This is why you and I, you and I have to come to this mindset mm -hmm. that you know what? Sin don't live here anymore. That's right. You said that That's before, right? right? That's yeah, right. sin don't live here anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm through with you. Our relationship is over. Mm -hmm. We have been divorced. Yes. And guess what? Hallelujah. We're going to take time and divorce ourselves from this moment. <laughs> Amen. But we're going to come back. We ain't complete divorce. We're just going to have a little a little pause for the cause until come back until we come back at you next week. Again, I'm Pastor Vanjas. I'm Pastor Sherry Weathersby. That's just the truth. Anyhow, with the Weathersby, the Sound Alarm Ministries on Heart Ministry Network TV, when it is being and has been done from the heart, you know that it is being and has been done right. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. And until we do, we do the thing. In the, the Lord, God bless you. Bye-bye.